One of the most popular career paths that top MBAs and private equity people often pursue is to start their own search fund. I've worked at a search fund and I've also considered it a lot for myself, so I understand exactly how successful the model can be. On paper, the search fund sounds like an optimal way to blend one's entrepreneurial desires to run their own business, as well as their finance ability to diligence and find good investments. In this video, we are going to talk about the search fund business model, as well as the pros and cons of potentially starting one. So the search fund is an investment structure that enables entrepreneurs to purchase and operate cash flow generated businesses. I like to think of it as private equity of a single company. You're raising money from a group of investors and you're searching out to find one business. The main difference is that you want to be the one to operate the business. Oftentimes in private equity, you'll hire an external manager or keep the same management in place. But in this one, you are installing yourself as the CEO. So it does tend to be smaller scale companies and it tends to also need to be cash flow generative because you are using debt to buy the company and you got to pay down that debt. This is an extremely popular option among the top MBAs popularized in Stanford. People who want the coolness of being in entrepreneurship without the risk of having to come up with their own business idea. In fact, 80% of people starting a search fund have an MBA. So this is a very logical extension of that path. So here's how the model works. Let's say you and your MBA buddy are both trying to find a company. The typical initial capital required is in that $400,000 to $500,000 range. This money is going to fund your initial salary, any travel costs you incur, from going to different businesses, as well as those upfront diligence costs. So once you've raised that money, you are ready to go out and start searching. Oftentimes this entails cold calling businesses, talking to brokers that represent businesses, as well as going to industry conferences and just meeting people. This is why it's exactly like private equity. You are trying to meet people that operate cash flow generative businesses that are also willing to sell. The searching process also includes doing all the standard business diligence. So that's things like analyzing the business model, going over customer retention, making sure the financials are in order, interviewing key suppliers and members of the management team. Once you feel like you found a great business, you'll acquire the company with the help of those initial investors. Oftentimes you'll raise about $5 million from the initial investors. This is also why you tend to need a little bit more credibility. It can be harder to raise that money if you have no financial background or if you don't have a quality MBA. The typical economics would give the searcher about 25 to 30 percent equity. Businesses that are eligible for this kind of search tend to be between that one and five million dollar EBITDA range. At this level, you can generally only lever the business between two and three times cash flow. This is in contrast to large cap private equity, which tries to lever businesses in excess of six times EBITDA. After you've acquired the business, you'll want to try to operate and make any improvements you can to the business and ultimately exit it. Just like any other deal, you'll hope to profit off of the debt pay down, any improvement to the business, and potentially any industry changes that improve the multiple you can get on your sale. It's always good to think about the fan of outcomes when you are approaching a strategy like this. One big drawback to the search fund is that not everyone finds a quality business. 31% of people who start a search fund never find an appropriate business to acquire. Of the people that acquire businesses, 29% sustain a loss. There is certainly the ability to generate a lot of money from a search fund, but it can be a little intimidating to bet your career on a company that you didn't start. Unlike other investing strategies that use a portfolio of assets, on a search fund, you rely on the idiosyncratic risk of a single company. In aggregate, the returns still are very good though. The average mean compensation for a search fund CEO is $275,000 and the average annual return across all search funds is in excess of 30%, which is far greater than a lot of other asset classes. So here are the reasons why search funds work. I think the main reason is because a lot of these small businesses have no succession plan in place. At the small business level, the founder doesn't always have family or logical people that also wanna run that business. Sometimes a small business has very specialized knowledge that it's also difficult to find an exact fit that's right for it. The second thing is that there is an element of financial engineering that a lot of small businesses don't know or aren't comfortable with. So if you have that sort of background, you can employ things like leverage. You can do things like issue a dividend or create a more enticing stock compensation package for employees. And thirdly, although you can hit that 30% return threshold, the dollar amounts sometimes aren't enough for large investors. It doesn't make sense for really large pension funds or private equity firms to pursue these small deals of businesses that are below $5 million in EBITDA. Doing even a small deal is an enormous amount of work. The economics of a search fund can make sense for a single person, but it doesn't always make sense for institutional investors. So of course, no career path is perfect. Otherwise, everyone would be doing this. So one big con is that deal making is really hard. As we said before, 
In aggregate, 50% of searchers never find a company or sustain a loss. The typical search fund person is late 20s, early 30s, and has some experience, but it can be scary to think you have a 50% chance of failure when you're in that important time in your life, when you might want to have kids or start a family. Secondly, a lot of these companies don't always tend to be in really exciting industries. Oftentimes, a search fund business is going to sell B2B industrial products or services. It might not have crazy top line growth. The most important thing for some people is to work in an exciting end market. When you're doing a search fund, your main priority is finding a cash flow generative business. And some high tech businesses at the early stage aren't always good at doing that. So the third thing is that oftentimes it can be difficult to also be picky about geography. If you're looking for all these other good characteristics of businesses, other people are looking for them too. And then to also expect that it's in an attractive metro area can be pretty difficult. This becomes a pretty personal career choice, but you can't expect that you'll find a great business also in the exact place you wanna live. Altogether, I think the search fund is a great business model that gives you a good blend between entrepreneurship and finance. If you'd like to learn more, you should check out Stanford's Search Fund Primer. They release a publication that includes tons of statistics as well as the instructions to start your own search fund. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.